there are two separate senses of smell uh, which are potentially detected in the human nasal cavity. The olfactory epithelium, which overlies the ethmoid bone, is part of the main olfactory system, which is separate from the vomeronasal organ and the vomeronasal system I'll mention presently. In the main olfactory system, the olfactory epithelium uh, has mucus, which traps odorants, which are then detected by bipolar olfactory neurons. These then send their axons through holes in the ethmoid bone, what are known as olfactory foramina in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, where they synapse with the olfactory bulb, which is part of the cerebrum, and axons from these neurons then pass through an olfactory tract to reach other reason, regions of the cerebrum where smell will be processed. In primitive vertebrates, and in fish and amphibians and reptiles today, the olfactory system is a major part of the cerebrum. In fact, in the most primitive vertebrates, it is arguably the major part of the cerebrum. Originally, the cerebrum was dedicated to smell more than anything else, as is evidenced by the prominent olfactory bulbs, accessory olfactory bulbs and olfactory tracts. The type of cerebral cortex found in these olfactory bulbs and in the areas which process olfaction are known as paleocortex, derived from the lateral pallium, uh, where they only have three layers of cells. Unlike 90% of the human uh, brain, which is composed of the neocortex with its six layers. These olfactory regions were obviously important as you look at the brains of primitive mammals, such as this mouse, this opossum, this insectivore, um, because the early mammals were nocturnal. So as you can see in this egg-laying mammal, the echidna, or in the loris, which is a primitive primate, at night vision is not as useful and so mammals made great use of their sense of smell using not only the main olfactory system, but also that vomeronasal organ, which allowed them to perceive pheromones secreted by other members of their species, and they obtained a lot of information about other members of their group in this way. As you can see, Many mammals, particularly primitive insectivores, retain substantial amounts of this paleocortex depicted here in red, much of it dedicated to smell. In contrast, humans have greatly reduced the amount of their cerebral cortex, which is derived from this paleocortex, and have reduced the amount which processes olfaction. As you can see here, the size of the olfactory bulbs are greatly reduced. Humans do not retain accessory olfactory bulbs. Also reduced are the areas which process olfaction, such as the parahippocampal gyrus, the uncus, the piriform cortex, and the cortical part of the amygdala. There are a number of ways that this could be explained, this reduction in the paleocortex derived from the lateral pallium. Certainly, as primates evolved, they relied more and more on vision and the parts of the brain uh, dedicated to vision, especially vision during the day, became larger and more prominent. At the same time, mutations accumulated in many olfactory genes, so about half of the human olfactory receptor genes are mutated in the human genome and non-functional. Also non-functional is the entire vomeronasal system because of mutations which have accumulated, which have rendered it non-functional. 